Hello everybody, this is Tyler and I am here to talk about the stages of anesthesia. This is going to be a basic video, we're not going to get into the intricacies of anesthesia. I just want to give a good outline of what we're talking about when we describe the phases and the stages of anesthesia. So based on Goodall's classification, there are different phases of anesthesia. This is going to include our induction, so putting the patient to sleep, maintenance, so keeping the patient asleep, and emergence, which is gonna be waking the patient up after anesthesia. So this is gonna be our phases. Now there's different stages of anesthesia that we can be talked about. These can be superimposed upon our different stages. So we have stage one, we have stage two, stage three, four, and five, and then we're gonna emerge in the reverse order, but we'll get to that later. So what do I mean when we're talking about different stages of anesthesia? So again, I said we have induction, so putting the patient asleep. I've been told by my mentor, Dr. Duong, he was the one that introduced me to the concept of anesthesia is just like flying an airplane. The takeoff and the landing are always a little hairy, but the maintenance is, you know, tends to be more autopilot mode as long as everything goes according to plan. So here, we're gonna be putting the patient to sleep. We need to induce the patient. When we induce a patient, they're gonna go through the different stages of anesthesia. So we're gonna give a medication or a combination of medications, and they're gonna transverse from stage one to stage two uh, to stage three, and hopefully not to four and five, and then they'll come out in reverse order. So what do I mean when I say stage one? Stage one is gonna be the time between giving an uh, induction agent, so giving an agent or a drug, and the time of loss of consciousness. So the patient's gonna be awake when you initially give, let's say propofol as our uh, induction agent. So we're gonna give the propofol, they're gonna be still awake until it hits their system. Once the dose is large enough, it's gonna affect their brain they're going to lose consciousness. So this is stage one of anesthesia. So it's the time when they're awake after you've given the propofol agent to the time that they've lost consciousness. Now once they lose consciousness, loss of consciousness, then we're gonna enter stage two of anesthesia. This is called the hyper excitable state. So I'm just gonna write that down here. Um, so the hyper excitable state, typically it's pretty short in induction. So it's the time between loss of consciousness until the patient regains autonomic stability. Now, by saying they are gonna regain autonomic stability means they're gonna lose it at some point. By the time that they lose consciousness, during stage two, the patient is gonna be hyper excitable. The body loses its ability to regulate the autonomic system uh, as well as it would without anesthesia, meaning the body will partially lose the ability to maintain temperature, blood pressure, uh, the breathing becomes irregular. They may have GI issues such as vomiting. Um, they're gonna lose their protective airway reflexes. Now, like I said, induct in, during induction, stage two is gonna go rather quickly. You're not gonna see the temperature swing. You're not gonna see the blood pressure go all over the place. You're not gonna see their breathing be irregular for very long. It's gonna be a pretty short amount of time because stage two is fairly short. They're hyper excitable because they're going to decrease autonomic stability. All right, moving on. Once we've regained our autonomic stability, so we're gonna have normal autonomics. Now, stage three is the stage that is desirable. This is what general anesthesia wants. We want the patient to be in stage three because it means they have normal autonomics. Stage three is gonna transverse our normal range until we start seeing a drug overdose. 
So this is surgical anesthesia. Our ultimate goal is stage three for general anesthesia. You may see a little bit of respiratory depression, but in general, stage three is gonna be broken down into four different planes. So we have different phases, which is the induction, the maintenance, and the emergence. We have different stages, which depend on the patient's uh, stage of anesthesia, stage one, two, and three, we've kind of already covered. And now we've got four planes. So the four planes of stage three. Plane one, we're gonna have eye rolling initially, and then that's gonna become fixed. So you're gonna see the eyes moving about, rolling back in the head, and then eventually they'll become fixed. You're also gonna have loss of corneal and laryngeal reflexes. Sorry, I can't type, uh, write and talk at the same time. Next, you're gonna see the pupils dilate. Um, and also see a loss of light reflex. And then lastly, uh, during our fourth plane of stage three, you're gonna have intercostal paralysis. And you'll see short, um, shallow abdominal respirations. Now, stage four and stage five are not what we want. Stage four and stage five means you've given too much. It's an overdose of your anesthetic agent. So stage four is gonna be the first signs of overdose. Here you're gonna see your uh, decreased breathing. We're gonna see autonomic instability reemerge. Stability. Can't spell. Autonomic instability. And then stage five is going to be where your heart stops. So stage four is gonna be an overdose, but our heart is still maintaining its perfusion. We're still uh, maintaining adequate cardiac output. Stage five is where our heart is gonna stop. That means you have gone way too far. Now, the emergence. So there's gonna be five stages of anesthesia. We covered one, two, three, all four planes of stage three, four, and five, so now how do we emerge from anesthesia? Assuming we didn't go into stage four and five, which is drug overdose, that's a lot of drug. We're gonna start out in our surgical anesthesia stage, which is stage three. So here, we're gonna to need to emerge. Our patient is in stage three, they're asleep during the operation. The surgeon is talking to you and they're saying, uh, we're giving you the 15 minute heads up. We're just closing up the skin right now you're gonna to want to bring the patient about to their senses again. Like I said earlier, the induction phase of anesthesia is gonna transverse stage two fairly quickly. However, when we emerge, stage two is going to last a little bit longer. So the patient's in surgical, and surgical anesthesia, we're gonna to need to bring them from stage three through stage two. Stage two is gonna last a little bit longer. Remember, that's our hyper excitable state. That's where our autonomics are all out of whack. We may see this a little more. The patient may begin to squirm, thrash their arms about, their blood pressure may tank or go higher, um, their breathing becomes irregular, et cetera, et cetera. It's gonna last a little bit longer. It's gonna be more noticeable during the emergence. And lastly, uh, we'll get to stage one. Patient starts to settle down, their autonomics can get controlled. Finally, they become awake. So remember, reverse order for emergence. Now, here are my references for this. Hope you enjoyed.